one in the YouTube channel. As a competitive swimmer for the last 12 years, something that's always intrigued me and interested in the sport was different tech suits. I loved it back in 2009 when you had the full body suits, and since then, I've always tried to keep up to date with what's the best and the most used and the most popular suits on the market. However, I'm someone who likes to read reviews and comparisons of suits before I spend my money, but I find it something really lacking in the current community. No one's making any videos or blogs on what they like, what they don't like, um, and I thought I'd take it upon myself to be that guy, to do just that. So um, this YouTube channel is going to be dedicated to tech suit reviews and um, what I'm really enjoying using, maybe why I prefer one more than the other, and let's get going. The suit comes in three colours and two variations. This is one of the three colour designs and as you can see it features a blue and or well, lighter blue back, the FINA approved logo up on the top left and a completely black front. You can also get it in a red version and a white and blue version with a slightly lighter blue than this all the way on the front and it's mixed up with a complete white on the back. I must admit, I have both the red version and this blue version, but the blue and white version is by far my favorite. The reason I don't have that, it was only introduced at the 2000 World Championships as a special design, and when you're importing it from Japan, it does come at a slight premium. So I would rather get the same suit at a slightly discounted rate, just on the sake of design. That being said, I think design is hugely important in swimsuits. Confidence in what you're wearing is of course going to impact the performance. The GX Sonic 3 is made up of two different materials. The first material they call the light rib tex, and that is on the crotch area here and all of the back, all this blue. That's made of 67% nylon and 33% polyurethane. So a departure from the most usual composition of 70% nylon and 30% elastane. This material is quite unique and it has, funnily enough, slight rib into it. So if you run your fingers across it, you can feel little um, indentations and ra raises, which they claim has positive effects. This material here is much more standard of, um, of a race suit and it's more of that papery material you may have experienced before. Although the composition, again, includes polyurethane, which was one of the big banned materials because polyurethane is, of course, not a textile material. So I guess they're really pushing the boundaries of how much you can have within a suit and it remain permeable. Beyond that, the suit incorporates both bonded seams. So we have bonded seams here and bonded seams running down here, but also your more, more traditional stitch seams. So we have a stitch seam running down here. I'm quite intrigued that they use a stitch seam because, well, it's slightly raised and you would think a bonded seam is lower profile and therefore going to be more hydrodynamic. The waistband 
is pretty standard um, with a drawstring at the front and we have silicone grippers for the thighs. Inside the suit we can see these, uh, these strips here and these are just for the ST model, the sprint model and they help support your legs. Um, so the way they're formed is they're a material that when they stretch they want to return back to their original shape. So when you kick downwards they, they, they want to get back to, back to this position which then helps aid bringing your legs up which may sound absolutely ridiculous and surely can't be possible in terms of working but when I've raced things like a hundred freestyle in these I can definitely feel my legs supported on that last 25. In fact the first time I wore these I dropped just, uh, just under a second off my 100 freestyle PB which at my age is, is quite hard to come by. Worth noting is how thick the, the back of this suit is and um, I don't know if you can hear but as you can see look, there's actually a gap between the material there's actually so there's two layers there it's a two layered suit all the way down the back which is nothing like the other suits no, no suit I've worn has been as thick what's included with the product and this is one of the hugely hugely disappointing areas of this suit and that's not a lot so this is the box, the packaging that this suit comes in and yeah that's it so it's time to get the suit on to show you how it fits now and this is definitely one of the downsides of this suit putting it on um, now it's started to stretch a little bit so it's a little easier than it was originally but the first few times I put this suit on, my, knuck my knuckles were ripped. As in, you can still see scarring in. I'm not saying other suits aren't, aren't difficult to put on as well, but this definitely was one of the hardest suits I've ever put on. So I've put the suit on now, and as you can see, it's um, a slightly different cut to your more traditional jammer. I would classify this as a medium high waist. And I have worn the high waist before, ones that come all the way up to the belly button, and I hate it. Really did like it. Not only did I look a bit of a, oh, I won't say any names, but I did look a bit stupid. But when I raised it, it just felt wrong. This suit um, probably sits about three, four centimetres higher than my arena car. Throwing flexes and other, other race suits that I've used. But it feels a lot more natural. So just, just to demonstrate sort of where a normal suit would be, I'd say about here, I'd say that's where a normal suit is. And this one comes up. See, so there. So um, definitely a little higher, definitely a little higher. But it feels right. It feels good in the water. It, it, it doesn't feel unnatural in any way. And I still don't think it looks, looks stupid either. Which is again, some people will be a, a lot more of a factor than others. The suit comes just above my knees, like I like it. I don't like the suits that get down to my kneecap. I like them again a couple of centimeters above my knee. Getting the right size is always going to be quite difficult. Um, I sort of lucked out, they don't have this traditional 24, 26, 28 sort of waist sizes, but they instead, um, they instead just have a kids 130, kids 140, extra, extra small, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. It's not nine sizes, it's ridiculous. So I, I've done my best with the measurements provided and I went for a medium, which turned out to be spot on. In case you are interested in buying a pair of these and you'd like some sort of comparison to other suits that I wear, I wear a 27 Speedo Laser Racer 2s. Um, in Arena Carbon Probes, I wear 28. I can still fit in one pair of 26s that are stretched. Carbon Flex, I think, can't be a bit bigger. And I have a 28 Flex, but I definitely think I'd wear a 26 Flex. So that's just a few other suits I'll wear. So I, and I'll wear again a medium, medium, medium. Six foot two. Um, they, they fit spot on. In terms of actually how they feel when in the water, I think they've got a great compression, they really have, and a lot of suits nowadays have got a great compression. That thick material at the back, with them uh, the tape and taping seat inside, really do the problem with my muscles in. And I'm not just saying that. The slightly thinner, thinner material around here, they have quite the same compression on, on my quads as it does on my hamstrings, but it's still tight, it's still really tight. And as you can see, well, from what I told you about my knuckles, it really is tough to get on. Another thing about the fit of this suit that, that's definitely different to other models I've had is it doesn't have a lot of stretch to it. So you've all probably got out your, your speed of a laser or your carbon, whatever, carbon air, carbon pro for the first time and looked at it and gone, there's 
no way I'm fitting in these trunks. And as you slowly put them on, and the first, the first time is always the hardest, they stretch around your legs quite well. With this suit, they come out a little bigger. My first thought was, these might be too big. Five minutes later, when they're still here, I was more concerned about the bigger ones because they just didn't stretch. So I might as well jump in the pool and we'll just talk about performance now. Without getting too gushy, I must say, the Mizuno has changed the way I view tech suits. Since the ban in 2009, I was a little disheartened about suits maybe not making as much of an impact as the full body did. I did have a jacket J01, the full body, 100% polyurethane, super tight, killer suit that set so many world records. And it just changed the way you swam. You sat so much higher in the water, it had so much compression. And since then, I've been a little disappointed. It completely changed my perception on what a pair of jammers can achieve. And things like compression and water repellency, they're probably not even the best in the marketplace, but for straight up buoyancy and how they make you feel and sit in the water, I feel like they are currently unparalleled in what I have tried. There's nothing quite like it. On the last 50 of 100 freestyle, you feel great. You feel like you're soaring on the tight surface. Your legs not sinking down to the floor. You're not struggling. And for me, that's such a big, step forward in the right direction it makes me so excited and that's why they're my reference and that's why they're a wholehearted recommendation for me as of now hopefully i'll find a better suit that would be great but as of, as of right now these are in my opinion the best the last thing i want to talk about is the two variations of this suit obviously i've reviewed the st version the sprinter model but they also do an mr variation or the multi racer so the sprint model, the ST, I guess would be for your 50s and your 100s, and the MR would be for everything else. The main differences I can tell is the taper inside is different, with the sprinter model being more of a hamstring support for fatigue setting in. The MR model seems to have less taper and more around the side. The second is the proportions of each material. So the rib tech is the more compressive material, which is on the back crop to the front and the ST has a lot more of this. The MR has slightly less of this and a lot more of the light material which is as I said the less compressed and the less tight and slightly thinner material so they're a bit more comfortable for longer races. A little bit more mobility which might be needed on things like 400 medley. Lastly I want to talk about something that really caught my attention with the suit and the, the reason that I well, jumped on buying a pair and that's because there's so many top athletes who aren't sponsored to wear them. The first time seeing this was last year at the World Championships. I was caught whiff of this at the last year's World Championships in Budapest. But looking further back from that, Joe Schooling actually won the Rio Olympics wearing a pair of these, as did Anthony Irving. What was even more crazy though, is James Guy had just come out of a sponsorship with Speedo. And he actually, throughout Budapest, changed trunks for the first couple of races. First trying some arenas and then set them in his Mizunos. And it was really when he, when he turned on some great swimming on the latter part of the week that he started wearing his Mizunos. Along with Caleb Dressel just wrecking things last year in Budapest in the Mizuno gear for Sonics. That's what really, really did catch my attention about this trunk. Also, when you look at the college system, the uh, conference and the NCAAs in America, where none of the athletes can be sponsored or go pro, they choose trunks that are generally going to offer them the best performance as they're buying them. And the majority of swimmers in these meets are now wearing the Zuno GX on quiz. So these are just a few reasons why they first caught my attention. Since then, I've clearly loved the suit, and that's why I'm continuing to wear it to this day. But that's not to say there's not something better out there, and that's going to be the goal of this channel, the surfing the GX on quiz. I really hope you enjoyed this first video, and I'm sorry about the, uh, the audio at times, the parrots around this place quite ridiculous but thanks ever so much for watching please stay tuned for more there's definitely some suits on the way but in the meantime let me know in the comments what suit you wear to your races thanks again i'll see you later